What is up, everybody? Sven Diesel here with Sportsman's Warehouse. We're going to be tying up Dave's Hopper. This is a Dave Whitlock's pattern, and we're going to be using some uh, products that you can find in your local Sportsman's. This is a, a must-add hook in a size 8. Uh, make sure you're using a dry fly hook for this, and we're going to be using the uh, UTC uh, Uni Thread in a 70 denier. I'm going to keep it a little bit lighter, so make sure you're paying attention to your thread tension and uh, we don't want to break our thread on this and uh, this is yellow olive for the uh, body we're going to be using this uh, Zelon amber this is a synthetic material pretty much the only synthetic thing about this besides the hook and so we're going to be using a pheasant tail fiber uh, a tail fiber and we'll be making the legs and I'll show you how to do that as well uh, for the uh, wing, we're going to be using this uh, turkey wing feather um, in a molted oak and we'll go through how to make that wing and make it nice and durable as well. And the last product we're going to be using is a uh, natural deer hair and this is in a natural brown and size is regular. And you could use uh, elk hair as well, but we, we're using deer hair for this. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, as mentioned, this is Dave Whitlock's pattern. He's very well known. This is a very popular pattern uh, in, in many shops. It's caught lots of fish. And so let's go ahead and get started. For the key here is I don't want any thread on this forward third section because we're going to be spinning some deer hair later. And so I'm going to start my thread kind of not in the halfway down the shank, but... Um, what would that be four tenths of the way uh, down and then we'll work our way down uh, all the way to the bend we'll go ahead and cut off that tag end and now let's start really getting into this fly so we need to build up a little bit of a body the way that I do this is I'm going to take that uh, Zelon I'm just going to pull out one strand I'm going to fold it in half kind of match up these ends the best I can um, and then you grab your scissors and just kind of trim them so that it's nice and neat we don't want some straggle uh, fibers going everywhere and so I'll just line those up and I'm not going to line it up so it's going to go a little bit past the eye uh, or about even and then I'm going to come up and over I'm going to keep this uh, butt end here on the top of the shank and then be mindful of where you started your thread because that's where we're going to end and then I'm going to fold this back up and over. So what we did here is we just created uh, an underbody that is now uh, somewhat tapered. And you can do that with your thread wraps, doing more tension towards the bend, a little bit mid-tension as you're up there towards the front. And then we're going to create the, the kind of back end of the body of this. And I'm just going to kind of twist this up, measure that's about how I want it to look and the way I did that was I kind of twisted it on itself and then just kind of let it loop over itself and I'm going to tie that off so that it kind of has a little extended body there if you would more looking life like a grasshopper um, if you would and I'll do a, a wrap in front and two wraps over the top and then proceed with my thread up to where we started our thread and now I'm going to kind of twist this around our, our underbody we made. I'm going to have it kind of lay a little bit flatter towards the back. And then as I work my way forward, I'm going to kind of overlap and stack those. You can see how that tapers forming really nice. And uh, I'll work my way over that little hump. And that hump's going to support uh, our, our wing and uh, lay the foundation for the front of this fly. And so we'll go ahead and just tie that off, wrap it back over itself. And that was a pretty easy body. So... Let's go ahead and trim that out, and now we're going to uh, get into make the wing. Um, make sure you don't have a lot of fuzzies all over, but uh, you know you can. The buggier, the better sometimes. But so let's uh, go ahead and make our wing. This is what we're going to make. Uh, take your uh, turkey wing uh, feather, and you're going to trim off about oh, eight to ten uh, fibers here. And it really depends on what size hook you're using. But uh, for this, we want it to be uh, roughly the, the width of the hook gap. That's a pretty good uh, indicator of how wide to do it. And the way that I do this is I just put it here in a little clamp that I have handy. And then I, these, these naturally are together, but when they're going to get abused and, and, and bit on, I want to put a little cement on it. And so that you guys can see what I'm doing, I'm just using some Z cement. I'm just going to brush this on both sides of this, uh, these, these fibers from the feather. And if I'm doing this not on camera, I'll lay it down on a, on a 
scratch piece of paper, something that I can discard so I'm not using my fingers. But I'm just kind of working those fibers, working the glue um, all over them, and I'll do both sides. And that you'll notice on this when you do the second side, any right now my tips aren't aligned. That's not super critical because we're not going to be using the full length of this. Um, but if you are doing a bigger one, it, it, it would be a little bit more critical to get those uh, perfectly, you know, glued together or naturally aligned. And you can see there that is pretty much it. Just let it dry off to the side. And now we're going to take this and, and we're going to trim off this butt end section. And I'm going to kind of measure how long I need it. And we're just going to form an, uh, a wing. And I like to just notch this. It makes it real nice and easy. You can do it round, but it's just a little bit easier for me to uh, put a little notch in it. And then here's the key. Don't play with it very much. Just at this point, we're going to lay it in our tie-in point. We're ready to go. Kind of wrap it over that body. And it helps to have a little bit of a chunkier body. And then we'll go ahead and tie that butt in with a moderately tight wrap. And then we'll kind of crank down now that it's positioned. Just make sure it's uh, how we want it. Even on each side, proceeding back to the back of what our body would be and uh, that looks pretty good if you want it to lay a little flatter do another wrap back uh, if you do two wraps back it would lay on the top and so i want it to suspend up a little bit and now we are going to make uh, the legs so if you never made these this is probably the hardest part of this fly um, i use tweezers for this so i'm since this is a size eight i'm doing two fibers here i'm just going to separate them uh, grab them with the tip of my tweezers. I've seen guys use crochet hooks. The tweezers seem to work for me. When I make that loop, I make sure that my ends are exposed, heading you know away from the stem. And then I come through and I just grab those two tips, and then I just make that knot. Now, you can do a lot of different uh, modifications. If you've got more fibers, you can uh, twist it, bend it. But uh, the key is to just keep the fibers super aligned grouped together and I find it easiest with the tweezers doing this loop method and there we go that is the legs we're going to be using like I said this is a pretty natural uh, using a lot of natural materials for for a hopper um, not a little bit more difficulty than you know tying one up with foam so let's go ahead and uh, if you don't like the tips of those where the the end of the toes I can just trim them off make them a little bit more butt end which uh, gives a little bit better presentation sometimes uh, and it also decreases the length is really why I do it and I'll go ahead and position it on uh, this side of the hook I want it kind of going upwards so not parallel with the hook shank I want it kind of going up not quite as steep as the wing um, but kind of an in-between and then we'll grab the other side and I'll go ahead and uh, match them up so that the legs are even because the fish will notice you want to make sure that they're even otherwise you're not going to catch anything I'm just joking. Fish have like half a second to decide if they're going to eat it or not. So you can play with these as much as you want, extending them back. You can add, uh, you can adjust the angle by pulling uh, upwards or downwards. You can, if you have more fibers than two, you can create like loops in it so that they're, they appear uh, bulkier. And what I like to do is I like to fold these back ends back and do a wrap or two over them so that they're not going to come out. And then just be very careful with your scissors here not to cut your actual legs that we want to stay on there. You want to just uh, kind of slide up and get them as close as you can to our uh, base of our wing. But we're going to be tying in a ton of deer hair. And so if they're a little bit longer and you're safer, it's not going to go unnoticed. So next step is we're going to grab our deer hair and we're going to cut off a, a pretty decent clump. This is a size 8, so I'm grabbing roughly a maybe a pencil in diameter. And then I'm going to grab it by the tips and just kind of get all this under, under fur off or any of these little not as big in diameter uh, hairs out. Uh, I don't want those. I want the bulky, nice, long ones for this uh, first step. And so... I, I use my fingers just grabbing those tips, just brushing it out, and you'll notice when you've got it pretty clean. Uh, you can also use like a comb or, or there's a bunch of different ways of, of getting that under, uh, under fur out. And so uh, go ahead and load them in a small stacker, uh, size your stacker according to the size of your clump. And then we're going to align this so that it goes not quite as long as the wing. I'd probably say two-thirds of the way back. And then we're going to come over with one two, three looser wraps, and now I'm going to start cranking down 
check it out and I'm going to pinch it so it's all on top get about a third of the butt ends work them back doing do one or two wraps in between and what this does is it provides a really nice secure uh, it keeps all those hairs in there it's another little trick I picked up from doing a lot of elk ericatus and so uh, tying it off in sections like that traps them and, and makes it real nice and clean and also pops them up so I want to make sure it's positioned how I want it and I'm going to take all those fibers back pull them up on top and then just kind of uh, do some wraps back to kind of push them and hold them up and uh, we want to make sure we've got a little bit of room uh, sometimes when you're doing these for the head we can do up to two clumps um, we're not we're not making like a popper where you're going to be stacking and, and putting a ton of deer hair on here I like to keep mine a little less dense uh, personally but I'm going to grab another similar size clump uh, I think for this size and how much room we got left we're probably only going to get one clump in uh, but uh, we'll go ahead and clean it the same way and this one we're going to apply a little bit differently um, we don't really need those tips they just kind of get in the way so I'm going to grab it here by the butt end section after I've cleaned it and I'm just going to kind of trim off where those those hairs start to taper in general and then I'm just going to keep it in that clump come over do two loose wraps and then on the third as I come up and over I'm going to kind of let it spin around the shank of the hook continuing to keep tension with my thread and now I've done about four wraps but you got to realize as it spun around you lost uh, half a wrap and then we're going to kind of uh, you can use a straw you can use your fingers I just have this little tool here that I use and then I'm going to work my thread through and get it right there behind the eye and I'm going to kind of see yeah I'm not going to try and squeeze another uh, clump on there, but if you if you notice you've got a lot of room and you can push that hair back, go ahead and put another uh, clump on. Like I said, I like to keep mine a little less dense, uh, but the original pattern definitely does call for uh, two clumps, I believe, and it's a pretty pretty rectangular bulky head. So, uh, but this is a size eight, so I'm keeping a little smaller, and uh, I've noticed I've had better better luck with this particular uh, head size. And so we'll go ahead and uh, do a whip finish. And this is a real trick. You kind of have to pinch all the hairs back, uh, work your thread uh, in there. If you get a fiber or two going forward, that's okay. But uh, you can trim that out later. But you want those to be part of the fly. So make sure you try and save them and get them all going backwards. And we'll create a little bit of a thread uh, bump there to keep everything nice and secure. Go ahead and break off my thread uh, since we did two whip finishes. And that looks pretty good. Uh, go ahead and fish it as is. I'm kidding. Now we got to trim it. So you want to come under here and I start on the bottom with my scissors and we're going to try and make it uh, a rec kind of a rectangular block basically. But I start with the bottom because that's easiest for me to use the uh, shank as my guide. And you just got to be super careful not to cut those legs, um, the, uh, the pheasant tail legs that we made. Uh, that's the whole fun of the fly, and so we don't want to cut those out at this point. Uh, it's still probably catch some fish, but um, we want to keep those in. And so I'm just kind of working my way around, trying to get these long ones going back. And we're going to keep those tips that we aligned. Uh, we don't want to trim those. And so just kind of work your way around. Uh, as you do this more and more, you're, you can go a little bit faster. But I, I try to never go too short in the beginning because you can never re-add the hair I mean I guess you could tie in another clump but you, you, you can't you can always cut a little bit more versus having to tie in more it's a little bit easier that way and so I'm just gonna come in here I'm shaping this um, I'm gonna round the bottom uh, corners a little bit uh, I'll round the top definitely a little bit more and then we'll come up here and I'll get the the shape of this I'm gonna kinda make it uh, I wouldn't quite say it's gonna be like a cone but I'm gonna definitely uh, make it less rectangular more oblique maybe I don't know I don't know the appropriate uh, shape that we're going for here but uh, just make sure you get all these and then the last step when I'm trimming is these top angles I'm just gonna kinda keep it at that almost cone shape and work your way and just kind of examine and if you've got um, hair that's kind of in the way that you don't know if it's still attached or not a little trick is to uh, take the hook and just kind of ping it off the the hook eye so right there see how I just hit it like that 
um, that helps get all those loose hairs you've already cut off and away. And so I'm going to just trim this bottom a little bit more. I could spend all day sitting here and trimming this up. And that's uh, kind of what I like to do. I'm, it's where the OCD comes out in me. And I got one hair right there. I can't, that's, I'm just going to trim it out. There we go. And so that's, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, you, if you're tying this bigger, you're going to definitely want to uh, tie in a couple clumps of uh, deer hair. But uh, that is a size 8 Dave's Hopper. Um, tie some up, add them to your box. Uh, try a few different uh, materials for the body. Um, but uh, try and keep it as organic and natural as possible. So I appreciate you guys watching. All these materials are available at uh, Sportsman's. Uh, make sure to click the subscribe button so you can follow along for future videos. Thank you.